Mines and planes in space. So we'll start with a vector equation for a line. So there's two ways to define a line. You can say you got two points and you can make a line in between them. The other way is you got one point and we used to think of slope was the other quality you would need or the other property. But now we're going to talk about direction because it's going to be um, two or three dimensional. So there's going to be a point and either a second point or a direction. So this is pretty easy to think about. Two points. Oh, there they are. On a line. Connecting them. There we go. So how do I get the direction? Now when it comes to points, I can choose either one, whichever point I want to start with. The direction, which used to be the slope, think about this vector right here. And your book uses V. So it was called, or the analogous property was slope. So I'll just write it was the slope. The reason I don't want to use the word slope overall is because it's not really rise over run because there's not just uh, you know go right and then go up. There's you could be going yeah R three or R four or R five whatever dimension it's in. There's no really right and up anymore. All right, so V's direction line goes, and then we'll use uh, P naught right there. And if I call the other point P1, so I got V equals end minus start. Now, it doesn't matter which way my vector V points. It could point the other direction if I subtracted the points in the other order. So V could go one direction or it could go the exact opposite direction. And you could still be talking about the same line. So either way, I could turn it around. Same line. So we saw how to get V. So we'll start with the uh, equation. I don't know why I keep writing in blue. So this is a parameterized. I think your book uses R of T. I like L of T for line. Oh, it's a beautiful L. My L's are the best. <laughs> P naught plus VT. So looking at this, P naught is a point, And this is in n dimensional space. So we'll just write in Rn. So that means our point has n dimensions. Our vector has n dimensions. T is a real number. So right here, VT is scalar multiplication. So a scalar multiplication happening right there. So I could write out all the coordinates, but it's going to be pretty ugly. So we'll just leave it like this. This is way more elegant. OK. And if we look back at that picture I drew, I'm going to label some t values. I'll use the red pen for t values. So I started, so first of all, what point would correspond to t equals 0? What point? Oh, you said p0. Yeah. I heard t0. Yeah, so it'll be p0 plus v times 0. So v times 0 is a 0 vector. So it's like adding nothing. So we just get p0. So there's our t equals 0 right there. What about L of 1? So we plug that in. P naught plus V times 1, which is V. Uh, what is V? Oh, it's P1 minus P0. So 
So P0 cancels negative P0, and we get P1. So the way you want to think about this parameterized line is basically if you start at time 0, you're going to be at the initial point P0 P or P0. As your time increases, you're going to go in the direction of V. At one second, you'll go whatever length V is. After two seconds, I would be right here. That would be T equals 2, et cetera, et cetera. T equals 3, 4, 5. And if uh, any other positive number, if it's bigger than 1, you're going to be outside that little blue shade apart. What if T is negative? You're going to go backwards. So T is negative, you're going to go the other way. T is positive, you're going to go in the direction of V. So that is a parameterized line. So we'll do an example. So I'm going to give you two points, and I want to know what <coughs> is one uh, parameterization of this line. Given points, I want to use P and Q. So find a line containing P and Q. So do that right now. Don't bother graphing. No point. The only picture you really need is the one that I drew right at the top. That's the only picture you really need. So you need a direction of vector V. Don't look at the board, just do your own work. And you do P minus Q on your paper. Okay. I'm Q, I'm just doing Q minus P? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So. All right, you do, you do Q minus P. Okay. That's what you were doing anyways, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to do the other way around, so don't look at the board. Just do your own work. So I'll just... Just make it negative. So if you use point, 
point P is your initial point. How is your line different from my line? So your vector v is negative my vector v. No matter what you did, your vector v should either be plus or minus my vector v. If it's not, one of us is wrong. Hopefully it's not me. Yeah. Since Plus. Plus. Yeah, it should be plus. All right, so I call my line L2. You're probably, your line's probably called L. So I did that on purpose. How are our lines related? Assuming you choose the same uh, point P and you didn't use Q for your initial point. So basically your vector goes backwards from my vector. So maybe I'll call my vector V2. So that'll be V2. So your vector V1, or just V, goes that direction. So the difference between your line and my line is your line goes, when your t-values increase, you're going to go up to the right. When my t-values increase, I'm going the opposite direction, down to the left. So that's how our lines are related. They are going the opposite directions. Well, I should write, I'm going to write your, but you should probably write my. So your L of t should have been minus 204 plus 21 negative 5 t. All right. Is that your line? I want to relate L and L2. So it's L of negative t. Well, it's much easier to write if I just go p plus vt. So this would be p plus v times negative t, which is p minus vt. And what is minus v? That's the vector I got. So if you parameterize your line in the reverse direction, you'll have my line. So there's not a wrong way to parameterize a line. There are two ways to do it. You can go one direction or you can go the opposite direction. Now I don't necessarily have to use uh, this vector v I got is 2, 1, negative 5. I could double it if I wanted to. The effect that would have instead of that arrow, that would be my direction. And then my t equals 1 would be way for it, way twice as far up on the line. So it would be like I'm going across the line twice as fast. Same line, but I'm going twice as fast. So parameterizing the line, is it the whole process, or is it one of those steps? So, I mean, so the parameterized equation is uh, whichever one of these you want to look at. Uh, I'll just circle this one, because it's the one I think all of you had. So that would be the, parameter the final line parameterized. The process is what it took to get there. Now, the only difference will be if you're going to find out if you go one direction, you're going to get positive. If you do an integral, you go that direction, you get negative. We've seen that. You change endpoints, and that's what happens to your integral. So that's where direction is going to make a difference. You get positive versus negative, yeah. So would you accept like, the answer right above the box? They're both correct. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much everything, this is all correct stuff. So I would take any of those. So I wanted to have a different one than you had so I can talk about how it relates. So I'm telling you, it does, there's not a first and second point. There's just two points. And you choose which one's first, which one's second. And so there's not a wrong choice right there. Now we're going to get into some of the more tricky geometry.
So we're going to look at the distance from a point to a line. Easy to draw a line. It's easy to draw a point. Now this is a super easy problem if the point's on the line. So what if the point's on the line? What's your distance? Zero. Zero. It's not exactly easy to know if your point's on a line or not. It's not hard, but it's not easy to know. You can't go by graphing. Well, if you spend a really long time making an accurate graph, you might be able to do it, but that's not a good way to go about it. So how do you know is Q on L? So L is just the name of the line. So here's the point Q. Here's the line L. Is Q on L? So this is the same as is there a solution to L of t equals Q? Is there a t value that has the coordinate on the line of Q? So is there a solution to L of t equals Q? So that's how you're going to intersect a point with a line. Uh, if so, your distance is zero. So let's suppose that Q is not on L. That's when this problem gets more interesting. It's very easy to, it's actually not hard to solve the L of T equals Q. You get three linear equations in one unknown. Very easy to solve. So let's say your point is not on the line. So that's what we're going to consider. So let's put this away. So let's suppose Q is not in L. How do you think we measure the distance from Q to L? So does it matter which point on L that I measure from? Yep. Oh, that changed a lot. Right? If I go with this point versus this point versus this point, they're going to have different values. So it matters what point I choose. So we better agree on a point to choose. Closest, probably not Closest which also happens to be orthogonal. So we're going to do some geometric constructions. So we're going to connect these together with a orthogonal or a right angle. If you can find this point, that's wonderful. But it's not always easy to find that point. In fact, I think if you want to find that point without doing what I'm about to show you, you would probably have to do calculus, take a derivative, and minimize, which you're more than welcome to do. What am I talking about? So let me show you how to solve this with calculus. So calculus one solution, distance. You probably want to maximize or minimize distance squared. I think that makes more sense than um, minimizing distance because that's the big square root. So we'll minimize distance squared equals. So if I write this out, there's a few ways to write it. Actually, let's just write regular distance. I'll write the vector equation first. Distance equals magnitude Q minus L of t. So Q has x, y, z values. L of t has x, y, z values depending on t. You could find the magnitude and then minimize it. How do you minimize the value of function? Take derivative, set it equal to 0. That'll either give, that gives you critical points. In this case, the critical point will be the minimum. Uh oh. I want to write DDT. It'll look like DDDT, and the D's will mean different things. 
Let's go capital D. How about that? That'll fix it. So we're going to set derivative equal to zero, solve for t. You can absolutely do this. It will, if you do it correctly, it will give you the minimum distance. Uh, it, it will gi it'll give you the t value that would give you the minimum distance. So it'll give you whatever your best t value is. Uh, then you can plug it back in and get the actual uh, distance. You have to plug it back in up top. If you plug it back in to the derivative, you better get zero. So you got to plug it in the original. And that'll give you distance. All right, so let's forget about this. So I'll just put it, this is good old days where you're maximizing stuff. Let's do this without calculus, which is weird because we're in calculus class. Uh, but I said there's no calculus in chapter 12. It's very easy to get a point on the line. What is, so if you know L of t, you can plug in any t value, and that will give you a point on the line. What's the easiest t value to plug in? Zero. Did we say the square root? All right, plug in zero. Sometimes one's easy to plug in. So I'm just going to default to the uh, t equals zero point. <coughs> so this point right here will be L of zero. It is very unlikely that that's the best point to use. So what we're going to do is get this vector right here. I'm going to move over my t equals 0. Actually, I'm not even going to write t equals 0 in there because L of 0 is good enough. All right, so we got L of 0. What is the equation for that line? It should just be q minus L of 0. It would be n minus start. So that would be q minus whatever L of 0, whatever point that is. So this vector, q minus, I'm just going to write L naught. That would be nicer. Q minus L naught. All right, so that's that vector. What vector do I actually want to find the magnitude of? That dotted line right there. That's what I want to find the magnitude of. Do you remember projections? It's more of a rhetorical question. Hopefully you do. All right, so if I project, now regardless of if v, the direction vector, let's assume that v, the direction vector, goes to the right, like this. So I'm going to project q minus l naught onto v. What that'll do is give me the full line right here. So that'll give me this projection. Right there, that line. What I really want, though, is the orthogonal projection. That'll be the orthogonal or perpendicular projection. So this dotted vector up here is the one I actually want. And that we call the orthogonal projection. So I think I wrote that as O projection of Q minus L naught onto V. And our distance is the magnitude of that orthogonal projection. And we did all that without using any calculus, no derivatives. So we better write down what projection is, and then orthogonal projection. So we'll write those down. So here's some old <coughs> equations. Projection of u onto v, which is not in my notes. Hopefully I remember it. So our projection uses a dot product. Oh, 
man, is that right? I know this is pre-calculus too. And unfortunately, I haven't gotten to that in pre-calculus two this quarter. It's been a while since I taught pre-cal two. So you get a scalar out of this. Is that your? It should be in a calc book. Yeah. Is that magnitude of V squared on the denominator or is magnitude regular? Yeah. All right. So how do we get the orthogonal projection? That was a little bit more tricky. So this longer vector is projection u onto v. How in the world do I get that vertical arrow, the vertical vector there? So I'll label it as orthogonal projection <coughs> u onto v. Which two vectors can I add together to get the third? So remember, you add vectors going head to tail. So do go down the first path, the first vector, and then <coughs> traverse the second vector. So if I go across which two vectors, would that be the same as going across a third? I'll give you a hint, v is not the vector v. What if I go to the right? And then up, that's the same as u. So I'll go to the right on the projection, and then up the orthogonal projection, and that should give me u. So if I add those two together, that's just head to tail, and I will get u. So we get projection plus orthogonal projection equals u. So I'll solve for the orthogonal projection. as u minus the regular projection u onto v. So that's our orthogonal projection. So I'm drawing a cloud around this, but it looks like this is probably not in your memory. So you, you may need to memorize this or put on your cheat sheet. Probably put on your cheat sheet. So all you need to do is find the magnitude of this projection right here. So orthogonal projection is u minus projection u onto v. Uh-oh u is q minus l naught. So we'll, use, we'll substitute that in in a minute. So the formula is u dot v over magnitude u, no, v squared. So we got Q minus L naught minus Q minus L naught dot product V divided by magnitude V squared times V. That looks pretty ugly.
Good news is there's another way. So this triangle is pretty small right here. However, it has one really nice property for trigonometry. It's got a right angle. So it means if we need it, we got Pythagorean theorem, but we got all of our trig Sokotoa stuff going on. So what I definitely know about, I definitely know this Q minus L naught, and I know V. So I'll redraw the triangle, and we'll do this in a more efficient way. Ooh, I never spelled efficient. Is that right? I try to spell mnemonic. That's the worst word. The word that's supposed to be a memory device. <laughs> All right, more official way. So we got Q minus L naught, some vector V, and I want to know, I don't necessarily need the vector exactly of the third <coughs> side. What I really need is the length of the third side. So I really want to get the magnitude of that vector or just the geometric length of the side. How can I get the angle right here, theta? Well, I don't, all I know is hypotenuse. I don't know, um, I don't know adjacent, and I definitely don't know opposite. So I can get it with the cosine relationship with the dot product. So cos theta is the dot product. That's one option. So normally it's u dot v over magnitude u magnitude v. In our case, it's going to be Q minus L naught. I'm going to use the letter U because it's going to get really ugly if I don't. And we'll just substitute out at the very, very end. So we'll call that U. What's wrong with knowing that well, there's nothing really wrong with knowing the cosine value. What is not terribly helpful? What sides does cosine relate? Adjacent and hypotenuse. I don't really care necessarily about the adjacent side. I really want the opposite side. So let's go with sine. So go with the sine instead. It's almost exactly the same except magnitude over, all right, sine is much better, that's opposite, over hypotenuse. So sine is going to be much better. So there we got opposite, and of course u is the hypotenuse. Or I should say, hypotenuse is really the magnitude of u, right there. Hypotenuse is a distance <coughs> of the vector u. So I want to know about the opposite side. So I'm going to <coughs> just look at this equation right here. I'm going to multiply by hypotenuse. Uh, and hypotenuse, we said, was magnitude u. So multiply by magnitude of u on both sides. So they'll cancel out. Ah, oh, it's much better. Absolutely. That's a much more friendly formula right there. Cross product divided by magnitude of V. And now we'll unsubstitute back out for U, which is Q minus L0 cross 
v divided by magnitude v, and this is our distance. So I strongly recommend you go this route, unless you're just trying to kill some time and you have plenty of time to kill on your midterm. So if that's not the case for you, uh, go this route, way better. All right, let's do an example. I wrote the parameterized line out as three equations, x, y, and z equations. So first of all, let's put all these together. One way to do it, if I do horizontal, let's, let's do vertical first, and then we'll just transpose it. So if I write it out in vertical vectors, x, y, z, we get 1 plus t, 3 minus t, 2, oh, just 2t. So I'm going to write that as 0 plus 2t. I'm doing that so that we know there's 0 as our constant, and we get plus 2t. So I could rewrite it like this. And this, of course, is a function of t. So in this form, we got p, or p naught, however you want to write it, plus vt. So there's L of t. So we got our initial point p. The easiest uh, point in the line is just let t equal 0. And then this whole vt part will be 0. And that will give us an easy point in the line. Is that from to so we. Find the distance from a point to a line. I'm just giving you a line in a slightly different form. So we've got to turn it into what I really want to write down are the po a point on the line, the direction of the line, and then a point not on the line. Those are three pieces of information I need to get this distance formula to work. So I'm just trying to find Q. Well, I already had Q. What is Q? Q is the point not on the line. So everything below here is all work that we were doing. So where is Q, or what is Q? 115. One, it's the point that's not on the line. So it's not over here with the line. So P or the Q, the point on the line, is not inside this part right here. So it's the only other thing, which is 115. So L naught is just L of 0, I have using a capital L over here. So that's just the point. You actually could figure that out right away, the very first thing. Just plug in 0. Right here, just plug in 0 for t. You got 1, 3, 2. So that's our point on line we're going to use. You just plug in t equals 0 right away. And that's our easy point on the line, 1, 3, 2. Uh oh. Oh yeah. So that's a very good reason. So I messed up there to show you why you want to write zero plus two t, 
or else you're going to look at the two. It's not the two you should be looking at. It's the invisible zero. All right, so that's a perfect demonstration of how to screw up. All right, so our point is one, three, zero. Now, what about the direction, the V, what direction our line goes? What direction does our line go? One, negative one, two. Which again, you could get without doing any of that extra work I did down there. So I can get the one, negative one, two, if I very carefully look at the original uh, linear equation. So we got one, negative 1, and then 2. So I can get the direction vector right out of the original equation. I just changed form, so things are more familiar with the way I was writing my notes above. Once we have these three pieces of information, we're ready to go and do cross product. Oh, we still have to subtract. So we need to go Q minus L naught. So that'll be 0, 1 minus 3, negative 2, 5 minus 0 is 0. No, that's 5. So now we're ready to use, finally, the distance equation. So it is the magnitude <laughs> of that Q minus L naught. cross something, cross V over magnitude V. So I think this is a good place to stop on this problem, because if I just do a cross product, um, this is just all arithmetic from here. So just do a cross product, get some magnitudes, and all that. So we'll move on to planes. So finish for homework. So what I think, I'll ask you the answer at the beginning of next class. So. <laughs> no. The extra credit I give out is very skimpy and very hard to earn. Uh, if you're going to brag about doing a cross product and a magnitude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Wait, what is wrong? Something's messed up. Oh, no, it's OK. I was worried we were dividing a vector by a vector. But this is not a vector divided by a vector. So if I go parenthesis a little bit more than I need to, what is the numerator, vector or scalar? So I got a vector cross another vector. What is that? Vector. vector. What is the denominator? Scalar. So I'm going to take a vector divided by a scalar. I was worried it was vector divided by vector, but it's not. You can't divide vectors. You, you can, uh, there's two types of products, cross product, dot product, but there's no division. All right, we'll just draw our picture of our plane. Most likely, the questions I will give you will be in three dimensions. It's where a vast, vast majority of the questions I'm going to ask you are being in three dimensions. So let's just draw a pretty picture. So draw your best plane, which is a parallelogram. If you're really into art, you could probably do some vanishing point stuff and impress people. But I'm not going to do that. So we got a P naught. We'll call this vector n. That's the normal. Talked about that a little bit. And to uh, signify it is a normal, you want to draw a right angle. It means it's perpendicular or orthogonal to the plane. And we'll pick any point in the plane. We're in three dimensions, so it's going to have x, y, z coordinates. So this vector is going to be p minus p naught, n minus start. What angle should be between these two vectors? 
90 degrees. So P minus P naught should be perpendicular to N. What is the easiest way to figure out if two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal? And what should their dot product equal? Yeah. Zero. And this is the number zero, not the vector zero. Dot product is your number. All right, there's the equation for a line, or for a, for a plane. Right there. And we'll do some examples tomorrow. So because I only finished, uh, I didn't finish 12.5, your midterm, I didn't give you a study guide, so I'll write right now your midterm is obviously Friday. And it's going to be everything you ever learned up through 12.4 included. And I yeah, I will. So. I meant to put the key up already, but I'll put the, the midterm, or the quiz two key online. And you should have all gotten your quiz ones back. If you didn't get your quiz one back, see me.